The bans have come, things have changed, Astrolabe is gone, the greedy, greedy mana bases, and by greedy I mean they're playing all basics, but they're playing like four or five colour, and they don't give a fuck about Blood Moon, nor do they give a fuck about Wasteland, but that's gone, Astrolabe is dead, Legacy is dead, long live Legacy. So with that said, let's play some of my old favourite decks. Let's play Pirate Stompy Take the Wheel. This is the old Pirate Stompy deck. It is a Stompy deck, or a prison deck. Our primary game plan is to stop our opponent playing any magic by putting a Trinisphere or a Chalice of the Void into play. From there, we then want to resolve uh, <laughs> Pirates. Richard and Cutpurse or Richard and Footpad both cause your opponents to sacrifice things if they can't pay the mana for their ability. So if their opponent has tapped out for a Delver or for a Chalice of their own and you slam a Cut Purse or a Foot Pad, your opponent's going to have to sack a permanent. That's going to make it harder for them to play for the Trinisphere. Of course, in Commander Legends, we're giving one more relevant pirate, which is Hull Breacher, the Flash 3-2 Merfolk pirate that says when an opponent would draw a card except for the first one in the draw step, they don't, and you get a treasure instead. This card was controversial. It's very powerful. It helped to really push the Mono Blue Echo Aeon's Khan Narset deck to be a tier one deck a deck that i love in legacy so for that reason because we've got access to this new pirate we're gonna play a bit of the khan echo aeons shit in this deck we're playing three copies of khan great creator we're playing three copies of narset part of veils and we're playing three copies of echo of aeons now you might think these are all very weird numbers and the truth be told is that i didn't know what numbers to play so i just i just rolled a dice and my roll a dice is i trimmed some to fit the fucking pirates in what we're looking to do is have a narset or a whole Witcher in play and cast an Echo of Aeons to draw seven cards. Our opponent draws none. Or in the case of Hell Witcher, they draw none and we get seven treasures. And then with the access to the Khan, we can go get like a Lion's Eye Diamond from the sideboard to get access to one of the combo pieces for the synergy. Or we can go and get numerous silver bullets. My favourites of which are obviously Marcus Infinitus, which with six mana allows us to lock our opponent's lands out of the game if we can defend the Khan. Or we can get silver bullets like Walking Ballista against creature decks like Death and Taxes or Elves. Or a source with Spy Glove to turn off a problem permanent like a planeswalker most of the time normally an oko but not anymore because he's also banned good riddance to bad rubbish we also have access to a fell flagship in the sideboard too uh, i doubt i will ever fetch it but if you don't have a fell flagship or pirate cutlass somewhere in your 75 you're not actually playing pad wash stompy to round out the deck we have four copies of force of will to interact with our opponent we have a shit ton of mana we have 18 lands we have uh, seven soul lands three city of traders and four ancient tomb and then we have four chrome mocks three lands of diamond two lotus pearls probably should be playing some mox opals but i didn't really think about it during deck construction and then lastly the last like piece of the puzzle if you will is siren's ruse we get to flicker one of our pirates we can save a whole butcher from removal or we can re-trigger one of our richard and pirates and we get to draw a card if it was done on a pirate it's bad but again if you're not playing it in pugwash stompy are you even pugwash stomping at all pirate stompy has a like a heritage a legacy if you will in the legacy community because bob huang and other uh, friends of his like julian narb and things were, were memeing on this shit uh, on forums and on Reddit and stuff, pretending that this was a thing that was coming around, especially around Ixalan block. Um, this became a thing where they joked that Pirate Stompy was a deck, but no one knew the actual deck list. It's one of my favourite memories of actually queuing into Julian Narb. It's the first time I spoke to uh, my good friend Julian over in Germany, and uh, we queued into him with Pirate Stompy, and we beat him playing Elves, and at one point he had to Reclamation Sage a fell flagship. Um, there is an old stream, it's awful quality, my sound is bad, my lighting is bad. The fucking UI is bad. Look at this shit. But it's a memory of mine that I cherish nonetheless. So, let's play some fucking Legacy, but before we do, don't forget all the videos on the channel brought to you by channelfireball.com, your premier source for singles and sealed product for Magic the Gathering. Don't forget to use the code KENOBI at checkout in order to help support the channel. We're also sponsored by Ultra Pro, who make beautiful glorious playmats for Magic the Gathering, as well as sleeves, and of course my favourite, the Saturn Tower deck box. And if you want to support the show directly, any of the videos I make and the shit that I spout, there's links to the Patreon in the description below. Let's fucking play some Legacy! This is the tale of Captain it is round one and we've won the die roll. Okay, we can chalice them and then we can wish it and foot pad them later. That'll have to do. Ancient Tomb, make two mana, hit ourselves for two. Cast the Chalice of the Void. If this meets a force of will, we're probably in trouble. I'm hoping it just resolves and it puts us into a state where we can play some magic. There we go. So our strategy is to make our opponent not be able to play magic. 
because playing magic is overrated. Snow covered island from our opponent and nothing else. Got him. We drew another foot pad, which isn't ideal. However, it does mean that when they play a two drop or something this turn, we get to foot pad them. Oh, they're an ancient tomb deck as well. They're... <laughs> oh no! They're Echo Aeons. They're the better version of what we're doing. So Charles and Zero would have been amazing against them. So that's a shame. Cavern of Souls on Pirate. And we're going to just play a, a foot pad, which they can easily pay the sacrifice clause for. So when ETBs, they have to pay two mana or sacrifice a permanent, and they have access to, well, three three whole mana. They might be thinking this was the mirror, but now they know that we're actually playing a strictly worse version. Bauble and Island from our opponent. We drew a Trinus Field, it's actually pretty good in this matchup. If they have Force, they would counter this, so they don't have Force. The thing is, they can still make a Hold Breacher in the end step, untap and uh, wheel us. They would have wheeled us anyway in their turn, honestly. So they've still got a lot of stuff they can do, but Trinus Field will slow them down from being able to play more zero mana shit. There's a Hold Breacher. They're tapping their lands and untapping their lands. Now they're tapping a Mox Opal. They're being a bit indecisive. There's a Khan the Great Creator. Okay, cool, cool. What we're seeing here is that our opponent has drawn a lot of good cards. Hold Breacher, Mox Opal, Lion's Eye Diamond, Mishra's Bauble to a lesser extent, and Khan the Great Creator. Meanwhile, we've drawn two lock pieces and two absolutely dog shit cards. Now I know what some of you are thinking. It's my fault for playing them. And you'd be categorically correct. We grabbed them in the Snaring Bridge so we can't beat them down. I guess we want to draw a card ourselves next turn. So we can, I don't know, turn off their artifacts. Grab a um, uh, liquid metal coating. Turn off their Khan. That sort of thing. We drew a Force of Will, which is less than ideal. As we can't even... We need to pay three mana and pitch a blue spell to it if we want to cast it. We're going to attack the Khan here for two. And I guess we just hold up Force of Will in case they kind of... Try to go for the Echo or for the Microsynth Lattice or similar. We're losing the race and we have a worse ball position. Do we want to count on Ensnaring Bridge? No, no. Which means we're in it for the long haul now. <laughs> it means we're going to have to uh, kill them somehow else. They're going to kill our Chalice, which is fine. Our Chalice doesn't really do anything here. They're going to cast a Narset. I'm going to counter the Narset. Because the Narset ticking down and finding an Echo or similar would be pretty brutal. Uh, we're we're in pain here. We're zapping ourselves. They've got a 3-2. It can't attack, so that's, that's nice. We really need to draw <laughs> some actual action. Uh, we're going to play a, a, a foot pad, which will force them to uh, sacrifice one permanent. They don't have the mana to pay for it. Well, they can Lion's Eye to pay for it. Or they can just sack the bauble and be done with it. They sacked the Khan. That is interesting. We're going to attack for two. Because they definitely will not block with that whole breacher. We can't play the Lion's Eye Diamond because of our own Trinisphere. That's right, our deck fights against us. But that's all part of the fun. It's part of the challenge. They played another fucking Khan. <laughs> that's why they were so keen to sack the other one. They're going to crack their LED for three blue. They're going to echo drawing seven cards. We draw none because the whole Witcher stops you from drawing cards. They make a shit ton of treasures. A metric fuck ton is what we'd call it here in the United Kingdom, and they play a City of Traitors. So they now have, like, I could count it. It's approximately a million mana. They down-tick Khan, they grab Microsynth Lattice, and it's good night, Mr. Tom. I would love to play first. We now know what we're against, so Charles of the Void on zero is incredibly strong. We're going to keep this. We'll draw another mana source. I'm very confident. Oh, fuck. Actually, come to think of it, playing it on zero, uh, they force it. They force it. Putting a whole picture. I'm okay with that. I say okay with that. I think having a, a Charles on zero is incredibly important. The problem we have is that I kept a land with two mana sources, right? And I was like, oh, I'll draw another. I'll draw another mana source. And then, like, most of our mana sources, like our Chrome Moxes and our Petals, aren't going to fucking work. Their first turn is insanely good. Can you see how fucking good a Chalice of the Void on zero would have been? Oh, magic's so hard. We drew a Siren's Ruse, which is lovely. That... That means we can reset our cup purses and draw a card. 
if we ever get to a third mana source. Bauble ball from our opponent. Activating Emery, playing the other Bauble in the bin. It's just gonna give him a load of fucking cantrips. Because they're currently down to one card in hand, so they've kind of shit their uh their load. They've spunked it all over the table. And now they're gonna refuel their hand by cracking baubles and replaying a bauble every turn. Uh, at least we're not under any pressure, but I do feel like we're a little bit behind. And also, if we miss a land up again, it's gonna we're gonna look kind of silly. I guess Trinisphere next turn would be pretty strong. Yeah, we are not cacking our turns here because we don't want to thin our deck in any way. Because we need to make that third land drop real bad. Come on, here we go. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, Chance the Void on Zero though is fine. It will stop future Lion's Eye Diamonds and Mox Opals. There we go, there we go, there we go. What we really wanted there, I guess, was a land into Trinisphere, then a land into Khan. Was where he wanted to be. They flash in a Hull Breacher. That's bad for us. Like, really bad. If you've ever wondered, like, what's the worst board position to have a Hull Breacher in play against you, it's when you've got a wheel in hand. Our opponent's Merfolk Aggro deck gets into the red zone, does four damage to us. Nah, set. Reveals an Echo of Aeon, so we're probably getting Echoed next turn. We drew a City of Traitors, which is not terrible. So we have four mana, we can cut purse them or we can Trinisphere them. Neither of these things are that good. <laughs> oh my fucking god, why did I choose to play this today? We're gonna cast a Trinisphere. They find a Lion's Eye Diamond off the Narset. They can't, they have to pay three mana to cast it and be counted by the Charge of the Void. Hopefully they mess up and do that. That'd be wonderful. No, they just have... Wow, that is an addition to this deck I was not expecting. Fuck me. Okay, we get our Chalice Raven formed. Welcome to Magic in 2021, where blue... Fuck, I need to play this in that deck. I, I, lo I love this deck. It's like one of my favorite legacy decks. Um, That's dumb, though. That shouldn't be a thing that blue gets to do. Okay, they got a lie LED. They cast the Echo for three out of the graveyard, because the Echo has a flashback cost of three, and they discard it because of the Lion's Eye Diamond. They draw seven, make seven trophy treasures. We don't. And you know what? I've seen enough. I've seen enough. It turns out that the pirate version of this deck that's playing shit pirates from Akadian the Mask is categorically worse than the proper version. Okay, we've won the Dio War again. It's fucking easy mode. Here we fucking go. We can go turn one Hull Breacher. Turn one Hull Breacher, turn two Cut Purse. Maybe, just maybe, we'll get there. This is awful, by the way. I would, I would advise you, watching at home, to never do this. The card advantage I'm going for here is off the chain, as they would say. I'm not going to get an underground sea here. Uh, I'm just going to get an island. And we're going to make three mana and make a... No, we're not, actually. Well, yeah, I kind of want to make a whole bridge now. But actually, if they haven't... If they play an island, they can have days. If they draw another card, they have a higher chance of having a Force of Will plus blue card. But you don't come to play whole bridge at sorcery speed, right? We're gonna, they're gonna once upon a time, oh dear. They're Maverick? That makes Hobbit a lot worse. I wanted them to cast a Ponder or a Preordain this turn. That's what I really wanted from them. Bayou, don't thought seize me, Hierarch. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna get to Cut Purse them next turn, so that's good. We untap, we draw a Cut Purse. This might end up working. Let's Cut Purse them. They can't pay the one mana, they've got a sack of permanent. Do they sack the Hierarch or the Bayou? They're actually stopping to read the card. We've got a reader, which is more than reasonable considering this card is not really played very much and for good reason. We take them down to 17 with attack and we pass back. Our opponent plays a Gaia's Cradle, but no creature. Hex Drinker. This gives them mana to play around the second Cut Purse. Please use your mana. Thank you. Green Sense of Zero, get a Dried Arbor. Let's go to combat and see if they double block the whole Breacher here because they might want to get off the board in case we wheel them. Oh, they just trade it for the Hex Drinker because the Hex Drinker's a 2-1. I forgot that it's a 2-1 at first level. Reading cards is a difficult thing to do. Cut purse number two. They lose the Gaia's Cradle. That means they've got another one in hand, right? Nobody sacks a Gaia's Cradle to a Richardson Cut Purse. What? What the fuck? Sylvan Library from our opponent. Ah, oh, the whole Witcher would have been so fucking good against that. Should not have offered that trade. Uh, draw a land for Khan. Uh, yeah, we did. We did. Fucking yes. Make a Khan. Oh, what are we going to grab here? I guess EE -E would blow up their Dryad Arbor, but it would also blow up both our Chrome Moxes, so that's quite literally the worst idea I've ever had. We're going to grab a Lion's Eye Diamond here, and I'm not going to cast it because they've got more chance of killing it on the board than taking it from hand. I mean, they can still be playing Thoughtseize, of course. If they don't 
interact with Khan or our hand this turn, we get to untap, crack the Lion's Eye Diamond for three blue, grab Mikes of Lattice and lock them out of the game. Wasteland. We're wasteland proof. They crack a Verdant Catacombs. What we would not like to see here is a Questing Beast. Questing Beast would be categorically the worst thing ever. Do not be... No, the Reliquid. That is fine. It's a 4-4. Four -four. But it's fine. Do they attack Khan? They do not. We untap and draw a whole Breacher, which is nice, but we'd rather just turn off all their mana, right? Cast the Lion's Eye Diamond, crack it for three blue, discarding the whole Breacher. Down tick our Khan. Say yes. We're going to go and grab a Microsynth Lattice. Now, the problem we've got here, my friends, is we have locked them out. However, if they attack and kill the Khan, they are back in the game. So next turn, they'll attack with both their creatures. We'll trade for the Dried Arbor and the Knight of the Reliquary will beat in. And then we need to draw something. Now, on the upside, we can kill one of their lands whilst we're doing this. This keeps our lock online. If we just draw blockers forevermore against the Knight, would be okay. Is this a blocker? This is not a blocker. This is categorically the worst thing. So we're now going to make our Mikes and Flats into a 6-6. Six -six. So it can block the Knight of the Reliquid. And they can't crack Fetch Lands, so they can't grow it this turn. And they scoop it up. Okay, they realize they can't win. There you go. Double Crafty Cut Purse. Turn one whole Breacher. Absolutely unbeatable in Legacy. There are four Ley Lines of the Void on our side that we could bring in, which would obviously be reasonable against a Knight of the Reliquid. But honestly, we don't want to do that because Ley Line of the Void is for the more extreme, fast graveyard decks like Reanimator and other shit like Dredge. And other stuff that's not even worth, not even worth talking about. It's not even, it's worse than the shit on my shoe. Okay, we have a hand that can't cast either of the Narsets. The Khan is probably also uncastable. We've got a whole bridge which isn't that good against Maverick. We've got a foot pad. So no. This hand is much better. If we get this whole bridge down and it survives, we get to Lion's Eye Echo and Love Life. We're going to put the foot pad on the bottom. You'd serve us well last game, my Richard and Pirate people, but... This time we're going to... Uh, where we're going, we don't need no cut purses. That's a reference to an 80s movie. Laugh here, please. Zenith for Dryad Arbor. Sure. So we hope they haven't got Plowshares or Abrupt Decay or something for our Breacher. We drew a Chance of the Void, which we can play on... No. <laughs> we just won't. Uh, we won't play it on one next turn. That one, in essence, will protect our whole Breacher from a Plowshares, but not an Abrupt Decay on Assassin's Trophy. Guardian of Thraben is upsetting. I will not lie to you. A soul on like an ancient tomb would be lovely here. We didn't. So we can't actually cast this chance for one now because Thalia makes it cost one more. Thalia has fucking betrayed me once again. Caracas from our opponent. In our protection for their Thalia. They get in with their Dryad Human Soldier aggro deck and do three damage to our face. Ramen up Excavator. Okay, so they're going to get to make a land up every turn. I like it. We're going to crack our tarn, grab an island. And we're going to make three mana and cast Chalice for two. For one, sorry. There we go, there we go. Plowshares protection is online. Wasteland from our opponent. Green Suns for two from our opponent. This is going to be a collector oof, isn't it? Ooh, a Garok Teague, eh? That's, that does put a shitter into our game plan casting the 6 CMC spell. Okay, we take a lot of damage. We cast Lion's Eye Diamond for one mana. We're going to hold up the mana for Holbridger. They're going to waste down at our Underground Sea. That's just a given. I'm going to float a blue off of it. We should have used the Underground Sea for the Lion's Eye Diamond. That was a fucking punt. They replay the Wasteland out of the bin thanks to Ramanov Excavator. It's solid. I like it. It's the sort of thing that I like to do in Legacy, that's for sure. We're going to play a Holbridger. Would have been pretty good to like surprise block the Garok Teague untap, draw a land, play the Narset then Echo, but we didn't get to do that. Draw a Tarn, crack the Tarn down to six. Oh boy, let's cast a Narset. Let's see what she can dig and find us. Siren's Ruse, that allows us to reset our whole Breacher and draw a card when we have mana. For the low, low cost of just three mana, thanks to Thalia. Fuck my old boots. And there's the Decay, we're dead. I'm gonna risk it for the Biscuit again because Last time we just like shat a load of mana away into a Richardson foot pad. It did pretty well, didn't it? Let's go Lion's Eye Diamond. We're just going to play all of these out ahead of Athalia because that's how I'm feeling today. Island. Pass the turn to our opponent. If they green something for zero or play a Noble Hierarch, they'll not get too screwed by this Richardson foot pad. As in, they'll get a, to keep a land, is what I mean. Chalice the Void on zero. Bit late, my friend. Bit late. But I guess they can sack that to the foot pad now. Green something for zero to grab a Dryad Arbor. We're going to tap and draw another fucking Chrome Mox. Jeez, okay. Magi <laughs> okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We'll draw something good eventually. 
Chaz the Void for zero is gone. Our Chrome Mox is in hand and now... Well, they're, they're half back online. Without a spell to pitch them, they're dog shit. Wasteland from our opponent. Oh, no, Ancient Tomb. Yep, there it is. Okay. Elvish Reclaimer. Okay. I guess we just want to draw our draw seven here. That would be beautiful. We did not. <laughs> Being able to cast this right now would be so good. But we can't. So we're just going to attack for two. For those watching at home who are like, why doesn't he pitch a Chrome Mox to a Chrome Mox? It's because you have to exile a non-artifact, non-land card from your hand. Otherwise, I'd gladly pitch a Chrome Mox to a Chrome Mox. But that would probably make Chrome Mox way too good. And it's already probably too good, considering it's banned for modern. Green Sun Zenith for two. If this is a collector oof, I'm going to scoop it up. Oh, fuck. So far, so good. We are we are 0-2. Um, we did win a game, though. And it was because of the Richardin fucking... Pi pirate. So I see that as an absolute win. Once more into the breach, my friends. Once more, we have Charge the Void on one. We have Force to protect ourselves. We have an Echo of Aeons further down the line. The funny thing is, the reason this hand's actually pretty reasonable, barring this absolutely fucking useless Siren's ruse, is the complete lack of pirates. It's a good thing. Now I don't, I don't want to say that the pirate life is not for me. You are a pirate. I just want to make that observation. And they've kept the six. Okay. Ancient Tomb, Chalice of the Void, I choose you. They have a counter spell for it. They pitch a Ponder to Force of Will, our Chalice. I'm going to just use this useless piece of shit, Sirens Ruse, as fuel for the fire. And I'm going to force back. This is legacy, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between, this is legacy. Force of Willing, a Force of Will that's trying to force a Chalice on an opponent is more to six. That's right. It's turn one. I'm down to three cards. They're down to four. There's a chance to avoid in play. Let's play some fucking magic. Or not play some magic in the case of our opponent. Wasteland. <laughs> Legacy. Look, there'll be some cunt on the internet somewhere who's like, oh, it's just not very fun. It's just not very fun to get Wasteland and play chalices. But if I'm honest, I'm having the time of my fucking life. The uh, Force of Will, Pitching Ponder, the Wasteland on our on Ancient Tomb, all of this screams Delver to me. So I'm assuming they're on Delver. They've probably got a Delver in hand, maybe a Mongoose, who knows. Okay, Holbridge is pretty good against them as well. Uh, we're gonna just pass back now, though. What we don't want to see from them is like a Hooting Mandrills or some shit. Like, they, they just get a load of stuff in the bin and they make a big threat that's gonna just murder us. Island... Let's pass the turn. Part of me wants them to obey the chalice and then go for a brainstorm in their turn so we can hold each other, but that, that, that's unlikely to happen. They're not playing main deck of braids, usually. They crack their scolding tarn. They get a trop. Oh no, it's going to be a hooting mandrels or some shit, isn't it? Just a tarmogoyf. Okay. End of turn, we're going to crack our tarn. We're going to grab a basic island because I don't fancy getting wastelanded. And we're going to hold each other. We did not draw mana, but we did draw a Narset part of the veils. We're going to play it and down tick. Do we find a Lion's Eye Diamond? We don't. We find a Trinisphere. Not terrible. Not terrible considering they're stuck on two lands. No attacks. We don't want to trade our Goyf. Or say trade. Well, no, literally trade. Trading whole Bridger for Goyf is bad here. I actually don't know if we get any treasures if we would. Uh, okay, they're pitch. They play the Delve into the Chalice. Now, that's not as big a punt as you think. Like I said, they might be trying to fuel their graveyard up so they can play a Hooting Mandrills or a Gurmag or some sort of Delve threat later. Or in this case, sorry, grow the Tarmogoyf. What doesn't resolve grows the Tarmogoyf. So we're going to lose our Narset here. We could have blocked with Holbridge and then down ticked our Narset. That might have been reasonable. They have two mana to play for Richard and, uh, Richard and Footpad here. We can't play a Richard and Footpad. So we're just going to play a Trinisphere. Playing that Trinisphere might have been bad, honestly. Because now if we draw a Lion's Eye Diamond, we've got to pay for it. We can't win this race. <laughs> our 3-2 could not fight their 4-5. We get a 12. We drew a City of Traitors, which is not awful, honestly. We're just going to use it to play this Richard and Footpad now. Uh, they can pay, so it's just going to be a 2-2 body, so we can try and race this 4-5. We get into the red zone with Mr. Breacher of Hulls. No attacks. They realize that they don't want to really want to race us anymore. Any land enables Echo. We didn't draw a land. That is fine. Let's go with Narset. Downtick Narset. Find a Chalice of the Void and a Force of Will. We'll take the Force of Will for now. No attacks. We're probably going to be throwing this Richard and Footpad under the bus to defend the Narset. And by bus, I mean the Tarmo Goyf. Under the bus it goes. Save the Narset. Save the world. They're going to wasteland our city of traders, which makes a lot of sense. I guess I'll just float the mana. Sure, whatever. We drew a Tarn. We're going to down tick Narset. We find a Lion's Eye Diamond. We're going to cast the Lion's Eye Diamond this turn. And then we're just going to Echo. They have mana to force, though. So we want to have mana to force as well. 
So we're not gonna echo right now. We are gonna attack them for three though. Because they can pay for force through the Trinisphere here and pitch a card. And we can't force back because of our Trinisphere. It is non-synergistic. I agree. But I don't give a fuck. Tumbleweed kills Narsa, so I'm never gonna find out how that works with the Echo. I've never had both in play and cast one, despite playing uh, the Echo deck quite a bit. <laughs> We're gonna untap and draw a Khan. We're gonna crack a Scalding Tarn and find a basic island. We're gonna crack this for three blue and cast an Echo. And I'm an idiot. Why did I wait? I forget that when I cracked the LED, we pitched the force anyway. So I should never have waited and I should have cast the Khan. Doesn't matter, they didn't have anything. Maybe they had a daze or two and a handful of one drops. I feel dirty. Okay, so we have a turn one Chalice of the Void. I can't keep this. We can't cast either of these things. These sequence bad. Let's mulligan. Ew, no! Sometimes you win a game of Legacy with a deck you don't deserve to win with. And the magic's like, no, we must correct this. So they give you a hand that's so bad. It's so bad. It makes my asshole bleed. Much better. Closer. Warmer. We're going to put two cards on the bottom of our line. We're going to put one of the Holbreachers. And then we need to keep Seater Traitors, Mock, Chrome, Mox, Echo, Holbreacher. Oh, God, I want to keep two cities, but I... Can he do it? Okay, let's just put that back and accept our fate of probably losing this one. They kept seven. They get to go first. They're going to have access to days. They're going to play a Delver of Secrets, which is hugely... Well, it's hugely better than they've been stuck in hand because we played a Charles on one, right? City of Traitors, Chrome Mox. We should probably pitch the foot pad, right? <laughs> That's probably better. Yeah, let's pitch the foot pad. Not the Echo. As we can get an LED off this, this obviously combos with it as well. We're going to pass the turn. We can always flash Hobbitcher in to block the Delver if it doesn't flip. Delver does not flip. That means the card they just drew was not a daze. So they have four, five cards in hand, one of which is not a daze. In they come. Let's see if they've got a daze or a force of will. Surprise blocker. They brainstorm with a fetch land up, which is basically demonic tutor. This interaction. It's the closest you can get to legally cheating, other than perhaps show and tell, sneak and show, or any of the degenerate storm decks. They daze my whole breacher. Okay, we put them back a land. That's something. Delver number two. Oh boy, if they flip those delvers next to him, we're in trouble. What do we draw? An ancient tomb? Okay, so I'm going to play the Khan because not playing the Khan would be silly. Play the ancient tomb. We lose it. We then play the Khan. If we find the LED, we can reset our hand. If they have days or force, we just lose. Oh boy, we just lose. Well, well I'm going to still play it on. I'm going to still play it on. Because we could draw whole Breacher into LED. Oh, the, they, they, they flip. They reveal a spell snare. So we've got to bear in mind that our two CMC spells won't resolve. That's basically uh, Chance to Void on one. And our beloved Flickery Pirate draw a card spell. It's been so good this league so far. It uh, is pitched to Force of Will exactly once, and um, I guess that's good enough. That's normally what people say, right? When a blue card gets spoiled, they're like, oh, well, at least it pitches to Force of Will. I'm going to play this cut purse so that we, we have a higher number of pirates cast. And then because I, I do value the time of day that it takes to, to talk and to play magic. And we're on the ropes. And we mulliganed. And they paid. I'm going to right click and see and go to game three. So we're now on the play, which is huge against Delver with any sort of prison deck. We open up with Force of Will, Wish and Port. Wish and Port? <laughs> no. Wish and Footpad. Khan, two Iron Eye Diamonds, and a Cavern of Souls. We don't have a Chalice, we don't have a Trinity, we don't have a Lock Piece. And if you're playing any form of prison, whether it be a good prison deck or pirates, you kind of do need a prison piece. So we're going to mulligan this. This, again, doesn't have a prison piece. Actually, we've drawn three pirates, two of which are actually quite strong, one of which makes me want to shit my own eyes out. So I'm going to say I'm not going to keep this. We're going to check what our opponent's up to. And they kept seven. So they can have four. So mulliganing to Chalice, as good as it is, or Trinisphere on turn one with like a petal plus a, a soul land. As good as that is, if they have force, we're shit out of luck. What does his hand actually do? Turn two cut first. I'm going to keep this and put a Hull Breacher back. I'm going to play a Scalding Tunnel past the turn. Now, we could have had a turn one Hull Breacher, which might have been good, but also we could turn one waste on our City Traders, and also playing a land afterwards would be bad. So I'm going for a longer game here by not just rushing that. If they cast Brainstorm, I'm going to feel bad. Just cast the Delver, go on. EE e for zero. Well, well, well. 
and the Delver of Secrets. Okay. We don't really want to draw another island, I don't think. So we're going to grab another island here. Helps then a little bit. Untap with an island. So, oh, an ancient, oh, an ancient tomb. We're then going to play a Chrome Mox. And I'm wondering if we want a Sirens, Ruse, or Wishing Cup honestly. So I think we might actually, this sounds insane. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. But I'm putting the whole Butcher under there instead. They can't pay for this cut purse. So they've got an option of paying, they've got Saka Delva, a threat, EE, which is interaction, or the Volcanic Island. What would you sack? Let's see what they do. They sack the Delva. I think that makes sense, honestly. The EE can disrupt us quite heavily, uh, including disrupting chalices, chrome moxes, and LEDs and such. And losing mana is just not where they want to be. Preordain, okay. They score two, putting one on the bottom of their library. They play a Wasteland. They Wasteland our Ancient Tomb, which is interesting. This means we get to riggedy riggedy wreck them with the Rishon and Cut Purse now. Well, they'll, they'll sack the explosives, right? There's no way they sack anything but the explosives. Let's go blue and a colorless for Siren. Well, cancel. Let's attack first, Vince. Let's get into the red zone, right? Oh, I'm excited. This is going well. Way better than game two. In for one. Take him to 19. Second main phase. A blue and a colorless. Let's let's ruse now or they're tapped out. So we get to flicker our Rishon and Cut Purse. They'll have to sack another permanent unless they pay one mana. And we'll draw a card, because it's a pirate. There we go. We drew Force of Will, which isn't terrible. They sacked a land. My god, if we draw another cut purse or flicker this cut purse again, can you imagine it next turn? Can you imagine it? I guess they're flooded. I guess they've got two to three lands in hand. And in all fairness, we're not really pressuring them. We have a 1-1 one, one in play. We drew another cut purse. That's uh, not well, a cut purse effect. We're going to go in for one here. Take them to 18. 19 turn clock. Let's go for this. Actually, you know what? I want to play around days. So I'm going to be absolutely insane and sack one of my Seer Traders here. Playing around days because of the land. If they had forced, it would have forced the Sirens Ruse, wouldn't they? Who will win? Five cards in a Delver player's hand or one bonky boy bonking? I don't even know what race of creature this is. It looks like a merfolk. Bolt my other one. Sure. They lose a land again or do they lose the EE this time? I have fun. What up there? Pirates. That's what's up. Yeah, that's right. I'm bringing pirates back. Second land from our opponent. This is going to be a time ago, isn't it? Or a mongoose or a hooting mandrills or something we can't attack through. It's some mandrills. Okay, they have to keep mana up in case of uh, the Rishnin Cut Purses. Hole Breacher, not terrible. So we now have a card to pitch to force if they play something back breaking, like, I don't know, a Nico Bolas. Now, I know that's not likely considering their current mana situation, but you never know in a game of Legacy. But more accurately, we can flash it in response to a Ponder or a Preordain or a Brainstorm. You can attack us for four. End of turn, we cast a Hole Breacher. We have mana to play around dates. Hole Breacher resolves. We untap. We draw an island. We don't want to play it because of the City of Traitors. We're going to go into combat time. That's, the, that's when the red bar comes. That's combat time. Taking them to 13. They have a Bolt. They're going to hit our Breacher with it. That's a shame, but sure. Means we're losing the race and we don't have game against Ponder Brainstorm or Force uh, or, or the other one. Um, Ponder Brainstorm, uh, Preordain, and we also don't have an Echo. Although I'm almost certain they must have a Daze in hand. Like, what else do they have in hand? Maybe Spell Snares? Oh, we know they have a Spell Snare from the Delver earlier, right? Was that this game or last game? That was last game. There was no Delver this game. I'm so confused. They crack a Polluted Delta and they cast, can't be Oko on the upside, a second copy of the monkeys. That's not good. We draw a Lion's Eye Diamond. We cast a Lion's Eye Diamond. I th am I gonna block? Because that's eight damage. If I block, it's, they got tramples. So it's only six. <laughs> draw a Khan for an Ensnaring Bridge would be gas. The problem being that they will have, we have four mana in play, one in hand there. If they have a daze, they count one part of that. They attack for eight. We're gonna go to one, which means we're dead to Bolt. We're dead to Fork Bolt. We're dead to Electrolyze, we're dead to, to all these other spells that can do one damage to us that aren't played in Legacy. Full Bolt and Lightning Bolt are, to be fair. Electrolyze was just a card that I wish was playable in something, even in modern, for God's sake. We untap, we draw a Cavern of Souls. Should we put the Fear of God into them? So, Cavern of Souls. Name Eldrazi. Yeah, that's right. Tap for two mana, sack the City of Traders, make a red mana for Eldrazi, sacrifice this. 
and right click concede. Okay, so what have we learned? Legacy might be saved, but Pirate Stompy is still complete and utter dog shit. Thanks for watching. Open Vins, also known as Pleasant Kenobi, on the internet. You can find links to other videos like this in the cards and in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Don't forget to smash that fucking bell. And next time you're kissing one of your loved ones goodnight, think of me. Think of me and just like stroke your knees. Stroke your knees, kiss your loved one, think of me. And I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta for now.